Hi, I'm, I'm Luke Valenta. I'm on Cloudflare's research team. And so in this talk, I'll talk a little bit about the inception of the League of Entropy and its founding members, uh, how the project has evolved, and our vision for the future of the DRM and League of Entropy network. So, so first of all, let's talk about a little bit about why randomness is important. I think you've, you've heard a lot about this over the, the course of this summit. Um, but applications rely on either, typically rely on either private randomness or public randomness. So private randomness is secret randomness that a party generates and then forgets about when it's no longer needed. This type of randomness is one of the cornerstones of computer security. And uh, so it's, requir it's required for key generation, for um, encryption and authentication. Uh, it's, it's required for privacy and, and anonymity protocols. And basically any cryptographic application you can think of is gonna rely on some form of private randomness. Um, and if you, a faulty random number generator is, uh, can be devastating to, um, to applications that require, require private randomness. Because um, even a slight bias in the randomness can, uh, can be a source of vulnerabilities. The public random, randomness on the other hand also has many applications. So public randomness is random values that are available to everyone to check and verify. So they, this wouldn't be very good for encryption keys because everybody um, can see this randomness. Uh, so public randomness provides a way to publicly audit randomness used by applications that, uh, that may have a significant impact. And so this public randomness needs to persist as long as it's needed, it needed for the auditing purposes. So one, one use case would be something like visa lotteries, where um, they could use public randomness to decide which of a pool of, uh, of equally qualified applicants is granted entry into a, into a country. Um, it could be used for a secure time stamping service to prove that an action occurred after some, some time. Um, clinical trials could use public randomness to, to split participants into a test and control group. Uh, in a provably unbiased way. So this could be used to improve the, the scientific method. Um, for, for gaming, gamers can no longer blame the RNG for their uh, misfortunes if, if it publicly verifiable randomness uh, for generating game events. In gambling, there's a, a high financial motivation to bias the outcome, so for a, a lottery. Um, so public randomness can be used to provide an unbiased outcome that's, that's publicly verifiable. So you'll, you'll hear a lot about other applications for, for public randomness in this summit. So a public source of randomness should have certain properties for it to be used in practice. So first, it needs to be available. So if the service goes offline, no one can access the randomness and it's not, it's not very good. Um, it should also be unpredictable, so future outputs can't be anticipated, and uh, it should be unbiased, so it should be a uniformly random number. So like, like Vitalik was talking about with using uh, a blockchain for randomness, the, it has the problem that the last, uh, the last person to submit the block could, could potentially tamper and bias the um, the hash of the block, for example, by including or excluding certain values. Um, and, and finally, uh, public randomness should be verifiable so that any tampering of the output could be detected by a third party. So previously, if you had an application that required a public randomness beacon, the solution would be to use one offered by an individual entity such as NIST. Um, but, but this comes with a lot of problems. First of all, it's a single point of failure. Um, so in, in the event of compromise or operational issues, the, the randomness speaking could go down. And it's also a single point of trust. So not everyone uh, globally is going to, going to be willing to trust uh, a US, the US government to provide their randomness. So that, um, this leads us to the, or this is where the League of Entropy comes in. So the League of Entropy is an instantiation of the DRAN protocol. And it's the internet's first production-ready, decentralized, and verifiable public randomness beacon. 
So the beacon operators are geographically and geopolitically distributed. The randomness is unpredictable, unbiased, and verifiable. And as an added bonus, all of the nodes uh, use a diverse set of entry resources um, to, to help seed their randomness. So these are the, the founding members of the League of Entropy. So, so it started as an experimental network in 2019 to kind of test the DRN protocol, may, uh, work out any, any issues that, that uh, might come up. And, and so this has been running for um, about a year now. So the, um, now I'll introduce the original members and their, uh, their entropy sources. So Kodelsky Security uses ChaCha Rand, which is a random number generator that's based on the ChaCha stream cipher. Um, Protocol Labs uses interplanetary Rand. So this is a, uh, it's based on the Linux pseudo random number generator, which relies on environmental noise and randomness from the CPU and other, other sources. Lava Rand, which is Cloudflare's randomness beacon uses uh, uses our lava lamps, um, which are located in our San Francisco headquarters, um, also behind me in, in the Zoom screen. Um, so, so it relies on the chaotic motion of the, the wax within the lava lamps to generate randomness. Um, University of Chile uses seismic brand, which um, uses randomness derived from seismic events like earthquakes, which I think is really cool. Um, the EP, EPFL's URAND uses uh, computers' local randomness from dev URANDOM, which is derived from keyboard presses, mouse clicks, network traffic, and other unpredictable events. And the league also has, uh, it's, it also started with three individual contributors, as well as these, these organizations. So that's, that's a little bit about the experimental DRAN network, which, which um, launched about a year ago and has been, been running since. But uh, over the past several months, there's been a big push to, to productionalize this experimental network and uh, make it so this can actually be a uh, critical part of internet infrastructure. Um, so, so as part of that, we've added a lot of new organizations and universities to the, the League of Entropy. So in total, the League of Entropy mainnet and testnet have 14 organizations and universities invo uh, involved current now, and we have more joining soon. So as we add more no node operators, the guarantees of the public randomness beacon only get stronger. So we really are looking to add, add new members and uh, definitely invite, invite you to, uh, to participate. So looking forward into the future, as the League of Entropies move from an experimental network to a production network, the focus has also shifted. So we're a little bit less focused on recruiting members that have these sort of original entropy sources. Although if you have a quantum computer and want to use it for generating quantum randomness, we'd, we'd, definitely, be, uh, we'd definitely encourage that. Um, and we're more fo focused on providing a foundational internet, a piece of foundational internet infrastructure that can be used. Um, so we wanna bring on reliable partners that are able to meet the operational security standards of the network. Um, and we're focusing on quality of service, decentralization um, as well. So, so Cloudflare's mission is to help build a better internet. So we're really happy to, to be able to contribute to this project and participate in the DRAN network. And we, we really look forward to continuing to, to partner with this network and, and see it expand. Um, and yeah, because we believe that efforts like this are crucial to the future of the internet. And with that, I can pass the screen over to Nathan from Kudelski Security. You've already heard a lot about uh, the need for randomness, uh, different randomness techniques. You've already heard about DRAND. You've already heard about the League of Entropy. So what I thought I would do is we kind of talked about the diversity of the League of Entropy. And Kudelski Security is a little bit different than some of the other organizations that are part of the League. So we are a security company. Um, and you know, I, I think having these diversity organizations and having diversity, uh, diversity in the geographic locations is really good because the goal is we're trying to create an unbiased high entropy random source. Um, and by having these different uh, methods for generating and having it happen uh, throughout the league, 
It's really good. It's, um, it's a collaborative effort that leans upon the strengths of the individual organizations, which I think is great. So Luke already discussed some of those. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you uh, kind of this perspective from a security professional slash security company side. So this is a picture of me just in case my video isn't good enough for you. Um, I'm the head of cybersecurity research at Kodelsky Security. And uh, it was my team, the cryptographers on my team, that participated in uh, the DRAN slash League of Entropy project. Um, I have a little bit of a uh, soft spot in my heart for this project because um, the actual planning and everything for this happened about a month after I joined Kodelsky Security. So I was kind of thrown into it, um, which is really cool. Uh, my team kind of focuses on cutting edge and emerging technologies. And the thing about DRAND that was attractive is that it gave us an opportunity to kind of work with, you know, bleeding edge cryptography with a bunch of organizations who are passionate about solving some of the same challenges that we saw as being challenges. And far too often in my career, um, I've seen a lot of projects slash products that were kind of focused on building something cool and then going and finding a problem. That's just not the case uh, with randomness. Um, so I'm also a Black Hat Review Board member. So if you're into the security space, you've probably heard of the Black Hat conferences. I'm the track lead for the AI, machine learning, and data science track. And at Kadelsky, um, we kind of have a, a similar mission. So Luke mentioned the mission of Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Uh, our mission is to help people build better products in general. And that's ones that are safer, more secure, and privacy focused. So we help companies innovate in a secure manner, which then, of course, builds trust uh, with, their, with, their, um, uh, with their customers. And we do this through traditional and non-traditional offerings. So the traditional security offerings are what traditional security companies do. But we also have an innovation group, which the research team is a part of. And we have an advanced lab. So this really gives us a perspective of security issues from the application layer all the way down to the hardware. And one of the things that we do is we help people with cryptography and privacy preserving, uh, privacy preserving technology. So we, we work with major cryptocurrency organizations, blockchain companies, um, exchanges, and even companies just looking for secure communication. So that kind of gives us a, a, visual, uh, um, a vision into the breadth of issues that are kind of plaguing uh, the security industry in, in general, as well as um, cryptographic implementations. And one of the things that was great about the League of Entropy was working with people, like I mentioned, who are passionate about the same problems. And I've heard quantum mentioned a couple times. We actually have some quantum security capabilities now, too. So just like DRAND and the League of Entropy is looking at the future, um, so are we. And we've already heard a bit about randomness. So why randomness? Why choose that as a problem to solve? Well, you know, Randomness underpins much of the security in our modern lives. So in issues with randomness can lead to devastating consequences. So if you think about issues with uh, retrieval of private keys, there's also been an, uh, an instance where I remember where a smart contract, uh, randomness was exploited in a smart contract um, to lose about 400 ether. Um, and randomness typically hides in the background. Um, and we do a ton of audits. And issues with randomness are among the most common issues we identify during audits, and that's from a hardware and a software perspective. So um, if you think about fairness as well, a lot of the oxygen in the room when you hear about the word fairness is usually related to artificial intelligence. So we talk about bias in, ran in um, uh, historical data sets, and that's a very important topic. Um, but one thing that should also be highlighted is that by using something like DRAND uh, that provides a public verifiable and unbiased source of randomness, you can create fairness in a publicly visible way. And as far as Kadelsky has is, is, uh, been involved with the project, we've been involved since the beginning. Um, and DRAND aligns with our core research themes. So we have three core research themes, that's visibility, simplification, and privacy. Two of those are painfully obvious. So the visibility, you know, D, uh, DRAND is public. Uh, anybody who wants to request value can request one. And from a simplification perspective, we've kind of taken the guesswork uh, out 
of the equation. So it's less opportunities to, um, you know, create problems in your applications. Um, when we first found out about the uh, lava rand, um, we wanted to do something super cool like that because, I mean, obviously using lava lamps for randomness is very cool. So what we tried to do was get a bunch of uh, fish tanks and build an aquarium and then use the bubbles uh, as the chaotic event. Um, but unfortunately, uh, that expense report would not be <laughs> would not be approved. So we kind of fell back to uh, our uh, using randomness provided by the Cha Cha scheme. And um, currently, we have three main net nodes and one test net node. And we've deployed this in a um, in a high security environment. So our nodes are monitored 24/7, 365 by our cyber fusion center. So there's a team of people um, every single moment of the day uh, monitoring these nodes for any kind of intrusion or any kind of tampering, things like that. Um, and I'll keep this brief. So the future, um, we're excited that um, the, the current version of DRAND is now um, you know, available to the public in a non-beta form. Um, we're excited to help bring that vision uh, for the future, for something so important, um, and we look we look forward to continuing support in the future, whether that be through uh, individual contributions, node hosting, um, things like that. Um, I want to say uh, once again thank you to um, Yolan on my team who put in countless hours uh, on this um, on this project. Uh, he, uh, I kind of feel bad, uh, like I'm taking the credit for all of his work, um, but he put a massive amount of time into this. So um, I'm glad that uh, his work is finally being uh, realized as well. And uh, we look forward to the future and we can't wait to see what, what you do with it and how you put it in your applications and use it. So thank you very much.